Albert Einstein once said, as far as the laws of mathematics refer to reality, they are not certain. And as far as they are certain, they do not refer to reality. And this is probably what intrigued this year's winner for the Infosys Prize in Mathematics. She completed her PhD at the University of Paris in 2000. She was a full professor at the University of Paris South and a visiting professor at the University of California in Berkeley and the Princeton Institute for Advanced Study. She's currently a member of the Institute of Advanced Mathematical Research, IRMA, at the University of Strasbourg. To tell you about her work, it's my privilege to introduce Professor Srinivasa Varadhan, Jury Chair for Mathematical Sciences. Professor Varadhan is a professor of mathematics and the Frank J. Gould Professor of Science at the Kuron Institute of Mathematical Sciences in New York. In 2011, he was awarded the highest honor bestowed by the United States government on scientists, engineers, and inventors, the National Medal of Science, for his work in probability theory. He's a winner of the prestigious Abel Prize in 2007 and was awarded the Padma Bhushan in 2008. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Srinivas Varadhan. Let me congratulate first Nalini Anantraman for being the winner of this year's Infosys Prize in Mathematics. <laughs> so let me read the citation first. The Infosys Prize 2018 for Mathematical Sciences is awarded to Professor Nalini Anantraman, Professor and Chair of Mathematics, Institute for Advanced Study, University of Strasbourg, France. It's for her work related to quantum chaos, specifically for the effective use of entropy in the study of semi-classical limits of eigenstates in quantum analogs of chaotic dynamical systems, and for her work on the delocalization of eigenfunctions on large regular graphs. I'm sure you all got it by now. So what I'll try to do is try to explain at least what the work is about so you have a feeling. So the idea is one studies dynamical systems classically as equations of how things move. And the quantum version of these things is a method it's called quantization of dynamical systems and that's what reality is supposed to be. Now the relationship between quantum system and classical system, one has to study how they correspond to each other. And there is a constant, Planck's constant, that comes into play whenever you quantize things. And as it's very small, and that means the quantum system somehow tracks very closely the classical system. So the simplest example of this is the dynamical system is a billiard ball, and the game of billiards. Now in the Indian context, you can think of it as the carom board. Basically, it's the same thing. Now a carom board, of course, is a square, but it doesn't have to be a square. It could be oblong, rectangular. And the short ends don't have to be straight lines. They could be semicircle. We are right next to the race course, so you can think of the race course as being a model for this. And it's a very strange carom board, has no pockets, and there are no other coins except the striker. And the striker is very small, so small you can think of it as a point. And the carom board is so nicely powdered that when you strike it, it doesn't slow down. It goes on and on forever, reflecting from every side perfectly. And that's the ideal example of a dynamical system. Now, the long-term behavior is interesting in many ways. If you sort of put a striker in, at a point and hit it straight at the long side, it just goes bounce back and forth and retraces the same path again and again. So it has periodic motion. Sometimes it could 
sort of bounce around a few times and then come back to the original position, they're still periodic. On the other hand, there are other paths where if you hit it at some awkward angle, it never comes back to the same point. It just acts crazy all over the place. And that's a little bit like chaos. Now, one of the things that one is interested in is what is the long-term average motion? So, so if you want to calculate some averages of uh, how this trajectory moves, then you, you can do one of two things. If the initial position is random in some sense, then after some time it's still random, but what the random position is after some time depends on the motion. And if you average it over the entire motion in a periodic case, then that doesn't change in time because once you average over a circle, if you move it a little bit, it's still the average over the same circle. So these are called invariant distributions or stationary distributions for the dynamical motion. And there are all kinds of them. There's one which is the volume of the domain of the carom board. That's one possibility. And if you have a closed orbit, just the uniform distribution over the orbit is another one. And so there are all kinds of invariant measures for a dynamical system. Similarly, for a quantum system, there are all kinds of invariant measures that come from some invariant eigenfunctions called in, uh, invariant functions called eigenfunctions of the system. And the issue is, how are these two related? And this studying this relationship is what quantum chaos is. And uh, it's a difficult concept to understand, but I hope you have at least some idea. And the work that Nalini did is the transition between one and the other, how to make the correspondence between quantum averages and classical averages. Uh, that's the best I can do. <laughs> now, I would like to thank other members of the jury who are helpful. Uh, Raghunathan from IIT Mumbai, Professor Kare from UCLA, Jennifer Chase from Microsoft, and Claire Rosen from Collège de France, and Gopal Prasad from the University of Michigan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Varadhan. And here is a video of Professor Anant Raman describing the journey that she's on. Can we have the video, please? In the next 10 years, I will probably continue doing research in mathematics. It's difficult to know exactly where the path will lead. Uh, I tend to follow my inspiration of the moment. My work involves understanding the mathematical equations that describe the propagation of waves and the disordered behaviors that can arise. I try to understand how this depends on the geometry. Right now, I'm focusing my attention on propagation of waves in networks and graphs. I think this journey started in my childhood with the love and the confidence that my parents gave me. I think this was really crucial for me. Please join me in welcoming on stage Professor Nalini Anantaraman. May I request Mr. Nandan Nilekani and Professor Vardhan to join us for the prize presentation. And may I request Professor Bhargava to present the Infosys Prize in Mathematics to Professor Nalini Anantaraman. Let's give her a big hand.
you, Professor Bhargava. Thank you, Professor Vardhan and Mr. Nilakani. Hello, it's, it's difficult to find words. Uh, this is a very beautiful ceremony in a very beautiful place. And it is a lot of emotion to hear my, my work being praised by Professor Vardhan, whose work I heard so much about um, during my studies in France, and also to receive the, the award from the hands of Manjul. Um, I take this prize as an encouragement to continue my work in the same spirit as before. Uh, I'm very thankful to the prize committee. I think it is great that the Infosys Science Foundation supports in this way fundamental and applied research in humanities, sciences, and mathematics. It is great for Indian science. Um, I would also like to thank my institution in France, so currently the University of Strasbourg and Institut Universitaire de France, previously University of Orsay and the CNRS. Um, I, cannot, I cannot receive this award without a thought to my, for my collaborators, and this in, includes in particular my students. They are the ones who shared the ideas, who shared the moments of joy and discovery, but who also shared the moments of doubts uh, that in, inevitably arise. Um, and finally, uh, none of this would have been possible without the very strong support I received from my teachers. I must say I received very strong support from my teachers right from preschool. Uh, and finally, of course, I would like to thank my parents for their love and my husband for his presence at my side for 10 years now, and, and also my children. Thank you very much. <laughs>